So you're trying to make money with Solana NFTs in 2023. You must be absolutely insane, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. Guys, in today's video, I'm going to go over every single thing you could possibly ever want to know about Solana NFTs going into this year, of course. Now, there's a lot that's changed since Solana NFTs obviously came out, and I'm going to cover everything in today's video that I think you guys should know, going over my opinions and my feedback, having been in this space for well over a year, and giving you guys my thoughts on everything. So if you're new, if you guys know what to do, drop a like, and let's get into it, folks. So there's a lot to discuss, and the main thing we have to discuss, obviously, are some drastic changes that have gone down since the previous year with Solana NFTs, and a few changes that I noticed right off the bat. I'll waste no time getting into this. Number one, the average project that performs well right now on Solana is actually pretty good. Now, you could look at all the different projects you could see uh, on Magic Eden right now that are selling, but you know, to be honest with you, most of what's in here that demands a floor price of less than like one Solana is probably not that good, to be honest with you. Most of these projects in here are not very good. I find there to be less meme projects that are successful now uh, and less pyramid schemes than we actually saw in previous years. So if you actually sort by floor price and we sort by a high floor price, um, looking at projects that obviously, especially on the main page here, that command a pretty good price, most of them are good. And that's something that might seem like, okay, well, that's obvious, right? Well, not really, because if you look back at previous uh, months during uh, NFTs, you know, you saw a lot of garbage like meme projects making it to the front that right now are not really a thing anymore. People actually like to put their money where their mouth is, and they tend to want to put money into projects that have actually proven something to the community. Uh, so again, definitely a massive improvement in the quality of projects. Now, the second major change that I think pretty much everybody has seen is that minting actually isn't all that big anymore. So, you know, you look at the average list of drops coming out, there aren't all that many. And that's not to say that any of the projects here are bad, but for the most part, people have actually moved on uh, to just trading popular collections. At least this is my view on the situation, uh, as opposed to just minting every project that comes out. Now, why is that? Well, minting, at least for a good six months, was basically instant money. If you got a mint, you could just list it for three times the price and make a fortune. People were making a fortune doing that. The problem is, at a point, every mint or like 90% of mints started crashing and burning. And you guys might remember this from a couple of months ago. Literally every single thing you would touch would sell way below floor over on Magic Eden afterwards. So at a point, it became like, hey, you know, we don't really have an interest in buying 10K supply mints that are just going to get, you know, floored for a third of the price the minute they go live. So if you take a look actually at the drops that are coming out right now, you know, you're not going to see a whole lot of mints. There's some, there's just not a whole lot in comparison to what we saw. You know, at a point you literally were seeing like 50 mints a day. It was insane. And then now not really as much. So those are sort of the major changes, at least that we're seeing right now from 2022. But before we go any further, guys, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my Patreon. If you guys haven't already seen this, make sure to check it out with the link down below in the description, guys. We have a ton of awesome stuff over here, including direct access to me. So if you want to ask me questions about NFTs, have me help you get started with NFTs, make sure to check out the Patreon, guys, the link down below in the description. You guys also get access to all my NFT alerts so you can see whatever I buy. Also direct access to me, of course, access to my private Discord, my free altcoin checklist, my weekly NFT report, and so much more. To be honest, guys, ton of awesome stuff down below in the description. It is absolutely a steal in my opinion. So let's take a look at what I was talking about when we come down to projects that don't really work anymore. And I'm not trying to put anything on blast here, but here are just a couple of examples. So, you know, the project where they pick a random animal of some sort uh, and just go with it, you know, cute uh, coyotes and, and launch it or, you know, something like this, you know, Solana, cats, you know, you name it. These types of projects don't work anymore, at least for the most part. You can look at anything like this, but you'll notice this type of art style, thug birds, none of them are really doing all that hot. And I think most people don't see enough substance in spending thousands of dollars on projects like this. So, you know, the days of just picking a random animal uh, and, you know, making a collection of 10,000 and launching it really aren't there anymore. So these types of projects definitely don't perform that well anymore. Now, when we talk about projects that are performing well, we have a lot, and we have a lot to discuss. But before we do, guys, I'll show you guys a little bit uh, how to make a Phantom Maw. I know some people might know how to do this. You could always skip this if you want. You could use the timestamps in the description. But, you know, some people who are just trying to get started, 
Very simple, guys. You can make a phantom wallet just by getting the browser extension phantom. You make a password, very easy. You'll get your recovery phrase, have your shortcuts set up, and you just add it to your browser. And you could sign in uh, to Magic Eden, which is basically the only place right now where people actually trade Solana NFTs. So uh, you do have a lot of options uh, in terms of wallets and marketplaces, but Phantom and Magic Eden uh, or Soul Flare seem to be very, very common at least. And uh, it's very simple, guys. So once you have a Phantom set up, of course, then you actually get into trading. Now, the number one thing about trading before we actually get to the projects is how do you actually get your liquid? How do we actually get our Solana in a way that makes sense? Well, obviously, the first thing you would have done is if you were smart, you would have gone and bought Solana at eight, nine dollars a couple of weeks ago. I unfortunately was not because I didn't have the liquid for it, but I really wish I did. And at the time I was saying this is probably a bottom and it was. So Solana, obviously, trying to dollar cost average in as cheap as possible to where when you're looking at Solana and you're tracking it throughout the past week, you know, finding little dips and uh, obviously divots in uh, the graph where, you know, you're buying Solana instead of buying it at, you know, 2580, you buy it at 2480. That little bit of a difference does add up over time. So definitely do use all your trading skills as best possible to try to buy Solana when it's down and sell it when it's up. It sounds really simple, but it's not quite as easy, you know, as you might think. It's definitely easier said than done. But overall, you know, if you look at Solana, even over the past three months, if you would have bought every time there's like a 5% dip on the day, you would have had a very low dollar cost average of around maybe 10 or $11. So that kind of thing you want to do for the future. You know, you'll notice with just about every pump, there is a little bit of pullback. So we pump uh, from 16 here, for example, up to 22, get some pullback down to 21 or 20. So that would have been a good buy time to buy in this instance. Uh, again, obviously, you know, nobody knows the future, but trying to buy on red days is generally going to be a better habit. We're trying to build better habits here, and that definitely is going to be a better habit to do. So getting into how to actually find good projects and get into projects that I like, I follow what I call a rule of three. And this is when, if I can afford it, if there is a mid-tier project that I can get into, I'm going to buy three of them, one to sell the minute it doubles or triples and try to get my initial investment out, one to make a toss up on, and then one to hold the totally diamond hand basically forever. So a good example of this is just a project I like is the remnants right here with a floor of 13.5, only 97 listed out of 8,000. This is just one example of a good project. There obviously, you know, are a ton of other good projects out there. We could use Transdimensional Fox Federation as another example with a floor of around 18 here and only 200 listed out of 8,000. So when we look at a project like this, you're going to want to buy three. If this is something you really like and really believe in, I think buying three is always going to be advantageous. Um, it's better, I think, overall to go for, obviously, quality instead of quantity. So, you know, it's not necessarily the number of projects you're invested in, but sometimes, you know, putting a very large bag into one project you like and trust is going to be a better habit. And in terms of floor price and finding floor prices that work, I think the, the sort of medium tier of like 10 to 20 Solana seems to be about a sweet spot because that has enough upside to where it could head to 30 or 40 yet doesn't necessarily have enough you know bottom ends to where it could end up crashing down to zero so any project under five solana for the most part for the most part is going to be a little riskier and you know again it's not a huge investment so you're not you know going bankrupt if the project doesn't perform well but i think if you're trying to find a good balance between projects that obviously are good but then projects also that you know are not going to break the bank finding projects between, you know, 8 and 22 Solana are probably going to be like your best bet. You could buy, you know, more of them and probably make a better portfolio doing so. Now, our other angle here is the giant collections. We have our D gods, of course. We have a lot of other things. We have our ABC. We have our dual bots. We have our OK Bears. Giant, giant projects like this that um, just have, you know, monstrous communities and are, you know, demonstrably some of the best NFTs ever. Now, projects like this obviously are going to break the bank completely. And, and, you know, if you could ever afford something like this, it is going to be extremely, extremely taxing on your entire supply. You're, you're going to run out of liquid very fast buying and flipping projects like this. Also, you run the risk, of course, of, you know, the floor being just dropped out from under you buying a project like this at the top. So I wouldn't recommend just diving nose first into these projects. Some of them are, of course, very, very good. And like I said, you have a lot less, you know, projects demanding 100 Solana now 
that don't offer anything. If you went back to June of 2022, there were a ton of projects going for, you know, 139 Solana that were garbage. And I think a lot of people, you know, can go back and remember that. So, you know, most of these projects have proven teams, uh, you know, have proven systems of actually making money, giving things back to their holders. So, you know, it's maybe not as much of the Wild West as we saw back in 2022. You know, all of these projects have basically made themselves globally pretty powerful um on the internet of course um you know being being very very good works of art so you know you can't really go wrong per se uh, in my opinion by picking one of these that you could you know muster up the liquid to afford but again it's going to really tap you out it might not be the best way to actually make profit um whereas again if you put most of your funds into say something that had a floor of like you know 15 or something that has a floor of you know 23 i mean you look at something like tayo pilots something like this probably has a better upside potential for the average Solana investor than something like, you know, a giant project like ABC, um, you know, or, or a lot of the other absolute colossal projects that do carry a lot of risk of, you know, you having to sort of stay afloat when the price fluctuates by thousands of dollars. That's, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? So, you know, that's my view, at least. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, dive nose first into every giant massive project like this, but they can be good moves sometimes. Well, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some projects that have worked and why, at least in my opinion, they have worked. And, and this should hopefully help you kind of get a gauge of what to look for in the future when assessing whether or not a project is worth your money. So, Again, like I mentioned in kind of the main theme I've been making throughout this entire video, it's a lot less likely to just find some garbage project from some no-name team with no reputation whatsoever that's going to explode. Very, very unlikely. You look at something like Tire Robotics, these guys have been around forever. They've weathered every storm that Solana has thrown at them. Soulport Tom has quite a reputation running Tire Robotics, Soulstead, Soulport. You know, this guy runs a lot. And this kind of team, you know, people who've built six figure businesses and, and et cetera, this is kind of the team that. I would suggest using as a guide. Again, there are a lot of projects out there. It doesn't have to be Tire Robotics. Utes here, another great example, obviously run by the D Gods team uh, or the D Labs team here in California. But, um, you know, these guys are absolute titans. They, they took massive, you know, flack at the time from uh, a lot of people, but D Gods continued to just improve and deliver. Uh, they, they have their developers going all out on Twitter spaces all the time, you know. They're, they're known as being literally one of the most successful NFTs of all time. Frank from D Gods is always uh, pretty much leading the space on Twitter. So, you know, there has to be some level of reputation with these people. You know, it's very rare nowadays to see projects just come out of nowhere from a no name team and be incredible without delivering really good concrete results. Another thing I don't see as much is like giant brands like, you know, adidas into the metaverse nike budweiser all these brands came out with nfts i don't see like existing you know consumer brands really doing that much with nfts these days i don't think those are probably your best move because at the time it was like oh budweiser they're a real company they're coming out with an nft and it's worth like 50 cents you know so projects that are, are coming from actual like tech studios projects that are coming from teams that are in tech that are in crypto those are probably better than just following what some football player bought, what some basketball player bought, you know, what some consumer product they sell in Walmart uh, has created in the NFT space. That's probably not uh, a good idea anymore. That used to be, just not anymore um, when you have teams that are actually successful in Web3 that are creating projects. So those are kind of the teams I would look for wrapping things up guys nothing is guaranteed there's nothing about nfts that's 100 stable or you know where you're gonna know that you're gonna make a, a ton of money overnight but i do think 2023 is actually easier than 2022 in the sense that yes you know we don't have mints just 100 xing off of launch but you know we can try to make educated guesses based on what these teams have delivered. Have they created good quality, you know, revenue sharing with their holders? Have they given something back? Have they built a tool or a resource for someone to use? Have they built a, a trading algorithm? Have they built, you know, a gambling website? Have they built um, some kind of software that you could use to do something with, to do your, your taxes with, to do all this cool stuff with? Have they done any of that? Well, that's kind of questions I would ask in the future, but you know, guys, Nothing is guaranteed. You know, at the time, back in 2022, everybody thought a project like Soul Punks was going to be, you know, worth more than Board Ape Yacht Club and it was going to beat out CryptoPunks. And, you know, 
didn't exactly happen. So again, guys, despite maybe your best judgment, nothing is guaranteed with a lot of projects. So always do your due diligence, always do your research, but there is a lot of money out there if you know where to look and if you know how to find it. Hopefully this video prepared you guys a little bit and just gave you some insight uh, into the way I do things. So if you guys did find this useful, again, the Patreon is down below in the description. Thank you guys so much as always for watching. My name is Matt. See you guys on the next one. Peace.